Uh, we are having a conversation here with Professor Ben. What's it? Professor, welcome to the show. Thank you. <laughs> so this is this is wonderful. And um, yeah. on Monday, you yeah. were at the Academy of Medicine in New York, where you presented a paper on type one uh, diabetes uh, and um, and uh, the the prospects of um, vitamin D, uh, something that could help people who are who are suffering from that. It was well received. There were several questions. Tell us a little bit about about uh, the presentation summary. So the presentation was about a prominent paper we published uh, late last year in the Journal of the American Medical Association, where we showed that people who received high-dose vitamin D in a randomized control trial had better outcome in terms of prolonging their honeymoon phase, which means that they will have lesser complications down the road. It also showed that vitamin D actually reduces what's called the poor insulin to peptide ratio, which is a marker of beta cell health. So that is the holy grail of uh, research in disease modifying therapies for type 1 diabetes and that's why it was well received and uh, we're looking forward to expanding the research into other areas. Mm. So um, here today at Hofstra we are talking about technology uh, in, in the treatment of uh, type uh, 1 diabetes. Uh, what, what did we hear from different people, caregivers and experts, even patients? What did we hear today? Yeah, today is just a fair which we are offering from the Children Diabetes Center at Hofstra um, you know, welcome to Hofstra University and North for health through Cohen Children's Medical Center, where we are bringing diabetes technology to the population, explaining how people can really do better on insulin pumps, continuous glucose monitors, and then these new algorithms that integrate data from, from both the pump and the sensor in a way that the basic can almost live independently without having to do much. They still have to put in the, um, insulin for their, or at least dial in insulin when they eat, but otherwise Otherwise, the pump control and the sensor and the algorithm will be controlling the blood sugar for them. Now, out there, there were vendors talking about uh, new ideas, new technology, and I'm, I'm amazed. Uh, how far away are we in Nigeria or in Africa from where the care for people who have type diabetes 1 here in America? How many years behind are we? It is principally a question of economic disadvantage and not a question of lack of knowledge. Because we can definitely transport the knowledge right away to Nigeria today and set up these um, technologies over there. But the issue is that it is not afford affordable to the people. There's not no strong insurance mechanism that will help people to get access to this technology in a subsidized manner that they can afford. And then the transfer of these um, devices, you know, it has to be safely brought into the country, installed and supplied and renewed. And these things take time. So my sense is that there's no political will to really help the people in a way that will put them on par with other people around the world. So it's not a question of lack of technology, lack of access, it's just an economic and willpower issue political willpower. So you've been involved in research in this field for a long time and published papers in several journals. Uh, how much of this kind of research is going on in Nigeria? <laughs> the problem is this. Um, research, it takes a village to do this research successfully. So there's so many aspects to it. You know, you have to have something like National Institute of Health that will be funding the research. Then you have to have companies that produce the things you need for the research. You have to have the personnel that will be doing this research in a way that will make it um, very rigorous. And you can publish them in very, very um, high-level peer-reviewed journals. I still go back to what government can do because here I did my fellowship at the National Institute of Health, which is the most advanced biomedical center in the world. If we had something like the National Institute of Health in Nigeria, I'm sure that we'll be producing at a higher level. The Nigeria's current Minister for Health um, was also here. I think he schooled here, did some practice here. Um, if you get the chance to meet him, uh, and you want to talk to him about what he could do within the budget of, of um, the Nigerian health system, what will you say to him? 
I would think that he has to put up something that will be a flagship institution for Nigeria. I think having something like National Institute of Health will be great. I said, yeah, I'm actually, we, in 2012, we launched what's called African Research League, where I and uh, 10 other members of my classmates in medical school uh, created this thing to sponsor research at the University of Nigeria and other Eastern institutions in the Eastern part of Nigeria to, you know, to actually stimulate research interest and also um, see how that goes. I've met one or two or three people in the United States who actually benefited from that program and they're interested in pursuing research. So you think that is working well, and if there is more support that people at home may be interested in or professionals or doctors in doing research? Absolutely. There are a lot of people who are interested in answering these deep questions. You know, we call it like um, high-level thinking. So they just don't want to see patients and treat the disease and just leave it at that. They want to go to the next level and find out the mechanisms of those diseases, mechanisms of things that haven't been, you know, shown. For example, we're the first group in the world to show that uh, vitamin D reduces um, pro insulin to C peptide ratio. That's key. Now, uh, final question. Um, you talked about that vitamin D study, uh, but also during the conference on Monday, I heard that from you. <laughs> that the guidelines by the Pediatric Association was different from what the ER research outcome is showing. So are you concerned about that in terms of um, whether you continue to work along the same direction? Uh, no, this is why it is important to be uh, a leader in your field because sometimes the society, the endocrine society, will uh, release a guideline. But that guideline is for population management. And sometimes in that process, they overlook certain populations. So it's for us now to say, no, this is not right. And we know that we are right. And then we are pushing to make it better. Okay. Um, one last question. This one I have to be on camera to add this one. So, um, we're talking about Nobel Prize. <laughs> so, what, what year are we? Are we coming closer? Oh, is, it, is it coming closer or is it going to be? I the know. emphasis is on helping human beings. Yeah, yeah, that, that one is going on already. That is that the most important on. thing. One is going on Once we can achieve that important yeah. aspect, yeah. we are good. We are good. <laughs> 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 Thank you so much.